this goes. I didn't think I was going to tell a story until, uh, until my table, which I can't see, which is good, <laughs> suggested I do. Um, so I, I just turned 40 uh, about uh, a month ago, uh, two months ago. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, every single time I, I get into a new decade, I realize, like, this is the best decade of my life. And uh, so the, the, the sort of theme tonight is when it was new. And uh, through my four decades of experience, I can tell everybody who's younger than me, if you do it right, it's always new. Okay? <laughs> now, in my life, I think I've had basically two, uh, two uh, driving motivations. And for the longest time, I thought, I can't have both. But 10 years ago, I realized I could. And I want to tell you that story. So uh, in, in the latter days of my high school career, into college, I did a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> We're on the internet, so I'm not going to say exactly what I did, but I think you get the idea. And it wasn't sex, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> there were many times I should have died. If I were ever to believe in a God, it was at that time that I thought somebody is looking out for me. So I go to college with the stated intent, explicit, that my first year is going to be devoted completely entirely to partying. <laughs> and indeed it was, it was fabulous, until I realized like, I can't even do school. Like, this is crazy. Uh, so um, I, I, I kind of took a year of sort of like, what am I doing, I don't know. Uh, and then I realized at one point, um, this is not how I want my life to go. Now, up until that time, I had great friends, awesome friends. And that was one of the, and it's, it's continued to be one of the driving forces in my life. Really good friends who I would just do anything for. Friends, family, significant others, anybody else in my life. That's one of the driving forces. It was my, I don't know, sophomore, junior year in college, however you want to define that time, when I realized I want something else. Now, the title of my story is For Love or Money. Really, it's For Love or, or Success but for love or money sounded better. Um, now, we all define success in different ways. At that time for me, I defined success three ways. There was, a, there was one day I, uh, I wrote these three things down. I want to exercise every day, I want to read the New York Times every day, and I want to get straight A's. I had two more years to get straight A's, and I did. Except for romanticism. The guy gave me a B plus. I think. <laughs> just because he didn't like my thesis, but it was a good paper. But anyway, I did really, really well. And I was a big asshole to my friends. I abandoned them. Uh, I was horrible to them. In fact, I actually threw a book at one of them. Inten I intended to miss him, and indeed I did, but he was pissed. Uh, justifiably so. I was not, I, I was great in the success department. I was a horrible friend. Looking back, I don't think I would have done it any other way. My life was going in such a horrible way that a paradigm shift had to happen. I, I don't know how else I could have done it. Um, but I did it, and, and I, I'm proud of that. We're not perfect. I certainly wasn't, and I certainly am not now. But I did it. And then I went on to you know, do some other stuff for a while. And then uh, about uh, uh, 11 years ago, I thought, well, you know, what am I going to do with my life? You know, I've got things pretty much in order. I'm healthy, you know, I'm happy. But what am I going to do with my life? I decided to go to law school. And I was really excited about it. I knew it was the right choice. And before law school, I thought, hmm, I think I'll be editor-in-chief of the Law Review. Now, anybody who knows anything about law school knows you can't just decide to do that. That goes to, like, the top person in the class. And I got straight A's, so I thought, well, if I just work hard, I'll be the top person in my class. It doesn't really work that way. Uh, and so I go to law school. I'm ready to go. I'm in the front row. I'm excited. Like, the success portion of my life, it is going places. Maybe even the Supreme Court. Who knows? <laughs> so I sit down in the front row. I've got my book open. i got my laptop. I am ready. This guy sits down next to me. Now, at this time, I had had the SETI project downloaded to my computer. Uh, you can uh, help NASA analyze uh, uh, um, uh, sort of radio waves coming in from outer space to detect any patterns, and it's the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. 
Uh, so you can download this program and your computer can help analyze these packets of data. Whatever, I thought it was cool. I heard about it on NPR. <laughs> so I downloaded it. The cool thing was the screensaver they gave you was this really cool Star Trek looking thing. I don't even know what it meant, but it was cool. So I, I had my laptop open and uh, the, the SETI project thing comes on and this guy sits down next to me. He's like, oh, that's awesome. You have the SETI project. I'm like, yeah, I do. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm busy being successful now. Thanks. <laughs> he says, that's so awesome. When I was in college, Russell, my, my roommate and I, we competed to see how many, how many packets of data we could download. I said, that's great. Thank you. He's like, yeah. But then Russell got two computers and I only had one. So like he just he totally blew me out of the water. So I abandoned it. I thought, this is great. This guy is totally ruining my plans. So I figured, well, whatever. Next class, he'll forget about me. Sure enough, he sits down right next to me. Throughout that whole day, he sits down next to me. The next day comes, I thought, all right, 24 hours have passed, whatever. He, he's going to forget about me. He sits down next to me, opens his computer, and he says, look, Steve, I got the SETI project too. Now we can analyze packets of data together. And I'm like, OK, who is this nerd, first of all? <laughs> He doesn't look like the friend I planned on having in law school. <laughs> and he's not going to help me become editor-in-chief of the Law Review. Oh, his name was Michael. We go on. The next day, he sits down next to me. He's talking about I don't even know what, dorky stuff. <laughs> but then the fourth day happened. I'm sitting there. He sits down next to me. Hey, Steve. Hey, Michael. How you doing? I'm good, Michael. How you doing? He's like, man, you know, I feel horrible. I feel really horrible. You know, I was fucking your mom last night, and I forgot to pay her. <laughs> and it, it was at that moment that I realized I had found my best friend. <laughs> It was 10 years ago, almost to the day, that I realized I can have success and friends. So thank you, Michael.